Hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Wednesday here from South Carolina. This is Barb Reed, the Wexford Stamper, with another fun Halloween project for you. Hope everyone is doing well today. We will, if we can, Mary, we'll try to send some rain to you there. Hi, Deb. Who's all here? And Mary and Ann and April and Joanne. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me tonight. Got a fun one tonight. This is a fave. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. It's three after and I like to be prompt. So let's go ahead and get started. Tonight is the seventh day of Halloween. So this is our seventh project, uh, treat holder and coordinating card I'm going to share with you today. And today's project is the mini moon pie box. Opens up here. Get my finger in there. And you have a cute little mini moon pie in there. And these are the banana ones, so they even look a little more like a moon. So... This is the box for the mini moon pie. And then here is my coordinating card. This is a fun one. I'm gonna get to use lots of the products tonight. All right, let's go ahead and share before we get started what I'm gonna be using. Remember that these are products that are available in the new mini catalog and that comes out in um, a week, September 6th, about a week. So get ready, this one is gonna go, and I have understanding that um, for demonstrators, it was put on, that they, there were none available, so I'm hoping they're stocking up for the catalog launch. So this is the um, Bag of Bones bundle. It includes this cute little set with the um, skeleton and all his little body parts and clothing and we have a cat and dog skeleton here and some real sweet little Halloween sentiments and then the die portion of the bundle is amazing too we have pieces that are going to cut out all the little parts of the skeleton as well as some extra parts with the um, tombstone the mausoleum here is a cute little fence spooky fence so lots and lots of great great things to work with there if this is the first day that you've been here for my eight days of halloween just check on my blog or on my youtube channel and you can see all the other projects here is another um great item from this suite these are called the glow in the dark bats and ghosts and they're little adhesive embellishments that you can put on your card all right i think that's about we're about ready to go then um as with all of my uh projects there will be a downloadable pdf available as soon as the I get the blog post placed up, which I try to do by the at the end of the evening, and you can go to my blog, and that is the wexfordstamper.blogspot.com, and there will be a blog post with all this information that I'm going to be sharing tonight, as well as a downloadable PDF that you can um, print out, so you have all the information that you need to make this project. All right, I think that's about it for today. I had a few minutes before dinner and I actually made a cute little Halloween pouch. Look at this, how cute that is. I love this cute little design. I just had some, pap some paper, see paper and fabric come out and have the same problems as either one you can get really really addicted and you love to collect it so this is a cute little Halloween pouch just enough for one of those to make but so cute love Halloween okay let's go ahead and get started we will work on the little box first and this is very much like a pizza box style 
All right, we're going to start with a piece of pumpkin pie. Make sure I have the right one here. Okay, this is the right piece. I don't want to use the card base by accident. Yeah. Okay, so this is the one we're looking for. Yeah, okay. We are going to start, never mind that little blip there. Okay, we're gonna start with a piece of pumpkin pie cardstock cut at six by eight and three quarters. All right, thank you, Dawn. Yeah, I just had a little bit of that fabric, so I thought I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick pouch. All right, so we're gonna bring in my um, scorer and trimmer. And we're going to go ahead and do some scoring on here. Let's do the long side first. And we're going to have to reach out our arm. Okay. We're going to score on the long side at one. And for one, I'm going to go on the right-hand side of the, of the channel here. So there's one. Now I'm going to turn it back this way. Four. five, and eight. One, four, five, and eight. Okay, now we're gonna turn it on the short side and we're gonna start at one half. I'm gonna do the same thing, go to the right side for the first since it's so small, then go to one and a half. So one half, one and a half, four and a half, five and a half. Okay, there we go. Easy enough. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to bring in my bone folder and do some creasing with my score lines. The bone folder helps make those creases nice and crisp. Helps your box come together very, very nicely. Hope everybody is having a great day here as we count down. The days left in August, can't believe it. August is almost over. Part of me is sad. A part of me is like really excited because that means football season is starting. And it, a matter of fact, college football season starts tomorrow. Tomorrow, can you believe it? And my team, Clemson, doesn't play till Monday, but I can watch all these other games too. I don't mind doing that. So I'm excited for college football season to start. All right, so there is all of my lines creased using the bone folder. All right, now we're gonna do a little bit of cutting. Let me grab my little template here to help you see what we're doing. Okay, you will notice I'm gonna hold this just like this is portrait. I'm gonna do the same here. Hello, Margo from California. Great to see you. Thanks for joining. All right. You're gonna notice that the, the um, you wanna hold this in portrait with the thinner or smaller um, panel at the bottom. And then we have the one inch panel at the top and this one is half or three quarters, I think. All right. So this smaller one is actually going to be the little flap that goes inside the box. So you wanna make sure that you have the smaller panel down, okay? Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my scissors and we're gonna start cutting from that, from the bottom section. Okay, you're gonna go over two vertical score lines and we're gonna go ahead and cut up through the first horizontal through the second horizontal and stop at the third. Okay? Now, I'm not gonna cut this whole section off. I'm gonna cut it off here at the second horizontal and then I'm going to make this into a flap to help put my box together. 
So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna do a little bit of wedging there to create this little tab. And that's gonna help us close our, that side of our box. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So in two vertical score lines, and we're gonna cut up through the first horizontal, second horizontal to the third, okay? Again, we're not gonna cut off at the third, we're gonna cut off at the second, and then this is going to create our second little flap, okay? So your, if you look at my template here, your first set of flaps are go down, and the second up here go out, okay? So um, it's a little different than a regular box, but this helps the box um, stay a little bit, gives it more strength is what I'm trying to say. All right, now let's finish up the last portion of the box and that's gonna be um, cutting out these two flaps at the top. So now we're gonna turn our um, box landscape. Okay, we're gonna go into the first from the left and cut up to the second score line, horizontal score line. We're gonna cut off the first and then create the flap, okay? Then we're gonna turn it this way. We're gonna go in to the first vertical. We're gonna cut up to the second horizontal we're gonna cut off this tiny little rectangle on the bottom, and then we're just going to do a little bit of wedging right there. So that's how quickly that comes together. Now I also do a little bit of wedging here on these. Now if you look for this one, let me show you. Those little sides are the ones that actually come down and over so that when you close the box, the lid does not like crush down onto your, your moon pie. Nothing's worse than a crushed moon pie. I mean, that makes me sad just thinking of it. So now for this sample, I used my corner rounder. You can use the corner rounder if you like. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a, like a diagonal snip. Okay, I'll show you right here. It just allows those edges to go in and out of the box a little easier. I'm gonna do the same thing on the flap, okay? So you can use a corner rounder on those or you can just do the little diagonal just to help it get in the box a little easier. All right, so there we have it. That is the box. Okay, the next thing we're gonna bring in is a little piece of designer series paper and this is cut at two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And this is a really cute paper. This is on pumpkin pie. And it says boo eek. I think that's all just boo eek, boo eek in little letters, really cute. Okay, and that's gonna go right on the flap. This is the lid that's gonna go over to close up our box. So I'm gonna grab my glue and I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glue on the back and then just line this up and center it as best I can. It's gonna go very close to the edges. Got a sneeze coming. There we go. Okay, there we go. And now we're gonna go ahead and let that dry. And as that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and put the rest of the box together. Hi, Diane. Hey, that's all right. We're just glad you're here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of glue on these tabs, okay? And then we're gonna just pick up the box. We're gonna fold in the sides, fold down the tab and line up your fold with the edge of the side that's right next to that flap. Okay, and Tombow's great. It goes very fast. Same thing here. Gonna, gonna fold that over, and then we're going to line up the fold with the edge of the connecting panel. 
and then I'm just gonna hold it for a minute. And what's great also about Tombow, not only does it, it dry pretty quickly, if you have an oops and wanna move something, it gives you a little bit of time to do that too. So Tombow is always kind of my adhesive of choice when I'm making boxes for sure. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and fold in these back two tabs. Okay, and they are gonna connect this back portion of the box. So I'm gonna bring that up. And now for this, I'm just gonna turn it over like this and place it on my tabletop here and just press down, making sure they're just where I want them to be. You can even grab your bone folder and give it a little bit of a push to make sure. Sometimes it's hard to get your fingers in there. All right, let's fix this one. So that's it. I mean, that's how quickly our box comes together. Yep, Tombow's the best. All right, so now you could make your box like this, close it up, and I have done that. Used it just for um, a project where I just leave the um, lid the way it is. But with this one and other ones I've used it before, I do really enjoy um, cutting out the and making a little window in the front. And the easiest way to do that is to use a two inch circle punch. And this one's no longer available, but boy, if you can get your hands on a two inch circle punch, it is one that I use so often. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a little sticky note. This is my best trick for getting my circle in the exact spot I want it to be. I'm gonna cut the two inch circle out of a post-it note, making sure part of the circle has a little bit of that post-it sticky on it. Okay, so there we go. Okay, I punched out that circle. Now I'm gonna take that and I'm going to put it right on my box here where I think I want it to go. Because sometimes since it's such a big um, punch, you can't really see where you're punching. So this makes you sh absolutely sure that it's right where you want it to be. So you just slide it back on, and then using your big muscles, you go ahead and make your little window. And that assures you that it's gonna be right where you want it to be. Now I have in the past put a little piece of um, window sheet on the inside. Yes, that is a great tip. Post-it notes can be used for so many good things in crafting. I have in the past put a window sheet in there, so I have like a window, but since you have a moon pie that has the plastic in the cellophane, you really don't need it. So I just stick that little moon pie in there and he is good to go. All right, I'm gonna cut this a little bit. This guy doesn't want to close, so I need to give that a little bit more of a cut there so that will go through. There we go. All right, so now we are ready to do our embellishing, okay? For the ribbon that I'm going to be using for this, I am going to use the, let me see what this is called, Starry Sky Metallic Ribbon. This came out when the um, new in colors came out. So um, this is available in the annual catalog. And what I did is I just opened the box. I sticked, I stuck, sticked the ribbon inside at the top hinge or fold. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and over under and then you can just tie a bow. Remember, it doesn't really matter where the bow is when you're tying it, because you can always move it around, slide it around once it's tied. So don't worry about it being in the right place. Just get it tied, that's the way I feel. Get it tied, then we can worry about zhushing and putting it in the right spot. So then I'm gonna cut off the little excess. And now with my other one, I had it all the way over here to the right, which I kind of like. So I'm gonna just slide it. I'm gonna open my box a little bit and I'm gonna slide my ribbon across to the right-hand corner. And there we go. 
There we have our ribbon. Okay, now let's go ahead and make our little embellishment. I'm gonna bring this guy in again. We're gonna be using the, um, I have them all in here, the tombstone. I cut out the tombstone using um, smoky slate and I did cut about a quarter inch off the bottom just because it was pretty large and I wanted it to fit a little better. And this is something I haven't really talked about since we started. There is a cute little die that makes grass. See that? This die comes in the set. And if you use it on a really thin strip of paper, just like I did here with the shaded spruce, you can make yourself a little bit of grass. Isn't that cute? All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put a little line of glue at the bottom of my tombstone. So little you can't see it. Oh dear, what a day. Come on glue, I know you're in there, there we go. And I'm gonna just take my little grass and just put it right there at the bottom of the tombstone. Okay, just like that. you have a little bit of grass around the bottom. Now for the uh, for on the box, since you don't have a lot of space, I actually took my snips and cut the grass off at both ends of the tombstone, just because there's not enough room. Now with my card, I let it go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and place this on here. Now I need to be careful because I don't wanna glue the tombstone to the moon pie. That's never good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of glue and go along the edge of my window, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to just secure that right on top. Now I can be sure that I won't stick it to the moon pie. Okay, so there we go. Now we have that. Let me move this guy. He wants to get in the way. There we go. That's better. Now we can see what we're doing here. You can see why I, I took off about a quarter of an inch there. And I forgot to put the, oops. I forgot to put the sentiment on here. And thank goodness it's Tombow. All right. I grabbed it, took it off before it totally dried. Hooray for Tombow. Got me out of a jam again. And then I put my sentiment on, which is the order we should have gone. And now I'm going to pick up the lid and place back. I'm getting sticky on stuff. All right, so there we go. Now we're getting there. Okay, now last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get out a piece of basic white cardstock and a little bit of gray, smoky slate, I almost said gray granite, and we're gonna go ahead and make two little, little kitty cat skeletons because I need one for the card as well. So there they are, so cute. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move out some of the junk. And I'm gonna bring in my cut and emboss machine. Let's go ahead and do these. We can't do them both at the same time, but we can do them nice and quickly. I am gonna, as I did before, I'm going to use my post-it tape, one of my faves, okay? For those little tiny guys that like to wiggle around, you can use your post-it tape and it will not move. And we're gonna take it on through. Let's see if I can get him off here. Come on, kitty cat. There we go. You just want to be gentle with the tape. There 
There we go. And didn't even hurt that other one. All right, so there is Skeleton Cat number one. Hey, Deb Noss, long time no see. Hope you're doing well. Let's go ahead and take out this second one. Sometimes it's hard to put this down when you're sitting. I'm a stander sometimes. A lot, a lot of the time when I craft, I like to stand. All right, one more time through for the cat. Oh, congratulations! You can do more crafting too, Deb, right? Uh-huh. All right, let's get this cat out and then we will finish up our box and get started on our card. All right, let's very gently take our tape off. And there is our second little cat. Oh my goodness. Can these cats be cuter? I, but I'm a little bit partial to cats. You guys know that. All right, I'm gonna grab a dimensional and this will finish up my box. Okay, let's go ahead and put our little cat at the side there. And there you have it. There is your cute little moon pie trick-or-treat box. All right, let's go ahead and put this um, card together quickly. I try to kind of use the same general design and the same colors for a coordinating card. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a piece of pumpkin pie cut at five and a half by eight and a half. We're gonna go ahead and fold it. And there we have our card base ready to roll. Okay, then we're gonna bring in a piece of the designer series paper, same as we used on our box. This is cut at four by five and a quarter. And we're gonna go ahead and put a little glue on the back of that. And that is going to go right there. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring in, I wanted to use an element in the card that kind of, ha that had the same color as the um, ribbon that I'm gonna use. So I brought in this small, um, panel of starry night no starry sky i always get that mixed up starry night is the painting and um this is starry sky and this goes right here on the front of the card right there in the bottom right hand corner and then we're going to put together a cute little scene to go right on there Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a piece of the glow-in-the-dark paper. Did I remind you today that they have this great glow-in-the-dark specialty paper? And it is approved. I have tried it out in the bathroom. So I give it the thumbs up and the Barb Reed approval, seal of approval. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that. This I punched out using the two-inch circle punch that I love. And I'm gonna place that here, kind of in the background for the spooky, spooky graveyard. All right, let's go ahead and grab these two other pieces. This is, again, is a cutout of the um, tombstone. Again, I cut off about a quarter inch at the bottom. And then here is another strip of the grass using that cute little grass dye. This time I'm gonna let it go and I used the shaded spruce card for cardstock for that. All right, I put a little line of glue at the bottom there and now I'm gonna go ahead and place my grass at the bottom of the tombstone. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to grab my stamp one more time and we're going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment on 
the tombstone. Eat, shriek, and be scary. Love that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my card right in the area where we're creating the little scene. Put three little dimensionals on the back since we want it to stand out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place it right here. Let's see, closer. I'm trying to do it like I did here on the other card. That's pretty close. All right, so there we have it. There is our card. Last die cut I need to add is my cat that I cut out before. Cute cat. Gonna turn him over, put a dimensional on him, and then we're gonna put him over here to the right of our tombstone. Looking very disinterested, just like a cat does. All right, let's go ahead and add some cute little bats from the Bats and Ghosts glow in the dark little embellishments. Let me show you these close up. Get a whole pack of them. You get some ghosts and you get some bats. I'm going with the bats this evening. We're going to have the bats flying up here by the moon. All right. Let's put this one right in the moon. And another one over here flying. And you could also put ghosts as well, but there I have those cute little bats flying. And last of all, we're going to add a little piece of the um, starry sky metallic ribbon. And we're gonna add that to the fold of our card, okay? This is a nice little added embellishment you can do for, for a card. Um, you want to make sure you're either using baker's twine or a thin ribbon because it don't want to interfere too much with the fold. And then I'm going to go ahead and see if I can tie a bow here on live TV. And now I got one giant loop and another one there we go then you want to take a little bit of time and get those loops just the size you want them i like my bow up toward the top but hey wherever you want your bow is where it should be right all right then i'm going to go ahead and cut off these little extras here and there you have your card all right, so there's the cards and our cute little boxes. So that is the project for this evening. I hope you loved it. I hope you go ahead and try some on your own. Remember that this Them Bone Suite will be coming out September 6th out of the new catalog. If you don't have a demonstrator, and you need a catalog, you can always message me. I'll be glad to send you one. So make sure you get out there on the 6th and buy yourself the amazing Them Bones Suite. I have one more project left for the eight days of, of Halloween. I hope you've enjoyed the series and I really love sharing these with you. So I will see you one more time this week, Thursday at seven o'clock for day number eight of my eight days of Halloween. So come back and join me tomorrow. I will see you then. Bye now. Keep on stamping.